you? How are oh, you? I'm, I'm, okay. I would not say very, very well. You know the situation, yeah. but uh, I'm trying I'm my so, here. I'm so sorry for your loss. I'm, I'm completely at a loss for words. I, I just don't know what to say. You've this, been through so much. I know this is a terrible disease, but it's good for everybody to know that this virus is deadly and it's very serious and we should take very good care of ourselves. Is Especially your mom? In, yeah. My Go mom ahead. is much better right now, so I'm really, really happy. Is she um, out of the hospital? No, she's, she's actually in the home now, so it's, it's, it's very nice. Okay. How are you? How okay. is your family? Everybody's doing great. We're really lucky. Um, I'm, I'm hiding in my bedroom right now, which I know is probably a little weird. Um, but every like desk and computer in the house is being used right now. The kids are doing online learning, Whoa. like remote learning um, with their schools. And I sometimes I might have to be a little bit quiet because my 12 year old has come out of a room a few times and been like, I'm on school, but you have to be quiet. <laughs> Which is like a new dynamic. I'm really not used to it. I being love home it. Much. Um, but it's been an interesting transition. They're really resilient and flexible, and kids are amazing and super inspiring. Yeah, I, I um, they've adapted really well to it, but it's been a really interesting time, you know. How is your day during quarantine? I mean, now you have the whole family in the house every day, all day. Uh huh. Three meals, yeah. All those dishes, all of it. But you're cooking a lot. I can see that from your. <laughs> It's so funny. Um, yes, there's a lot of cooking going on, uh, which is I'm I'm honestly I'm just trying to like build happy memories for my kids in some way during this time. I hope that we can look back at it and they can they can treasure some pieces of it and. You know, we can all find meaning in it one day, I hope, in the suffering um, of it. But, you know, we're lucky. So I'm just grateful that I get to be safely at home with the kids and we can cook and we can simplify. We can just simplify our lives. Maybe the only thing I accomplish in a day That's is true. those meals. That's I true. barely accomplish those dishes. I know. My, my husband has been amazing. He said the other night I was like, lying on the floor after dinner. I mean, just piles of dishes. <laughs> he was just like, <laughs> let he? me do this. He's great. He, he says that the dishes are his meditation okay, at the end of every day. Good. good. So good. I get in the back. Yeah, I do. It was amazing. That's amazing. So that's Are amazing. you reading any books, films? What do you recommend to our followers? Oh, I okay. So I, um, right now, actually, I have some books here. So this is what I'm reading right now. This is, oh. this is really good. Um, I'm good totally one. absorbed into this. But I've been reading some fun stuff with my kids, too. Um, let's see. I do have a pile here. I have a total pile. This is great with my that. daughter. This is, ama this is amazing. Oh, this is like an that. amazing escape. Um, it's about a young, basically a young witch and her powers. And it's great for the adults, too, because it's got this incredible it's like a an amazing metaphor for life and finding your magic and that's trusting in your own power it's a beautiful book um and yeah there's been a lot of i've i'm reading man's search for meeting which is a little bit heavy right now so sometimes i take breaks from that it is a bit um And I can recommend, I just finished Normal People by Sally Rooney. That was amazing. I think did you I read it? So <laughs> good. How are you, did you read it already? Yes, I've already read it. I really are you reading it. it in English or in Greek? Yes. No, this is in English. Do you read in both? Yeah. Do you read in any other languages? French, a bit of Italian, a bit, but I think it's quite trusty uh, at the moment. I have also read the, the conversation with friends. I think it was much better than normal people, to tell you the really? truth. Really? Yeah, try it. Trust me. And, okay. Uh, now I'm reading Milkman by Anna Burns. I think it's, uh, this is the one. It's in Greek. Oh, I don't know that. It's it's, I think it has a, in the, yeah, the Booker Prize in 2018. It's a good one. A bit oh heavy. God. Yeah, <laughs> it's large. <laughs> I'm doing like, I've got much more like bite size. Like this, my friend Christine recommended. It's amazing. But Is like, you can, 
it, you can manage this. It's yes, it's this is beautiful, and there's a dog that plays a big part in this. Okay, that's you can a nice see the dog. one. This is really good. This is really good, but it's about grief. It's about grief, and we're all experiencing grief in different ways. Plenty. That's true. Right now. What makes yeah. you happy now during quarantine? What keeps you sane? Oh, um, <laughs> sane? Um, let me think. I, so I found at first I, you know, had these grand plans to, like, take on all these projects, right? These, like, organize the garage and learn how to play ukulele and do all the photo albums from the last 15 years, you know, those, these big grand plans. And I think I realized I had to give my permi myself permission to totally simplify, like I was saying before, and to recognize that like productivity now means something different. And maybe there's meaning in that, like what, what are we supposed to accomplish in a day? It's different. because I'm, I'm not working in any way, shape, or form. You're working, so I'm gonna. It's gonna be interesting. I want to hear how yeah. how that's going. I'll um, experience. Yeah. So I think what what I had to do to stay sane. I mean, definitely exercise, carving out time for exercise, and I'm realizing that I need quiet. I'm not used to not having moments in the day of quiet. Even when I was working those crazy hours on suits. There was always that like half hour where you went back to your trailer while they were lighting and you got dressed or had a cup of coffee. There was always this quiet. And so my days have no quiet in them. So I just have been downloading meditation apps and trying to just find like a few minutes of quiet every day. Um, so that I think is going to help with sanity. And then just like thinking about the things that I used to feel guilty about that were self-care related, which was like trying to find time to meditate or, or read, just, just read for fun. I always felt like, Oh, I should be doing something. I need to be getting stuff done. And now I'm realizing like, no, I need to do these things. I heard my friend Tommy say the other day that when we're parenting right now, we've got to remember to put our mask on first, like in the <laughs> airplane, yeah, like you've got to, Put your oxygen mask on first. So I've been thinking about that a lot and how I can try to stay sane so that I can help them. Because what's really interesting for them is that they've they've adapted to the at home home learning, like I said, and that's been amazing. But there's the there are these moments when these really big feelings come up for them that are unfamiliar that maybe they've never felt before, sure. and being able to be present to that in a calm way. It's, the most it's, important. it's important and it's a challenge because I'm definitely reading too much news, you know, and, and getting worried all the time. It's very hard to stop the It's too the much worry. for all of us. Yeah. A journalist friend of mine was telling that, trust me, I cannot read any newspaper and I'm working in a newspaper. <sighs> Yeah, but you know, it's all the tragedy and all the drama. It's it's unbearable for a lot of people. It's so much. I know. Yeah. It's the good thing is now that we are out of the quarantine on the fourth of May. Okay. Which is quite good, I think, for the majority of people. You know, they need to go out and uh, embrace a little bit of freedom. But still, we are at the beginning. Will people, so what's going to happen on the 4th of May? Are the, are restaurants going to open? Like, is that all going to happen? Do you... So yesterday the prime minister announced the new meters. So now we are allowed to go out our houses uh, without any okay. special permission. Now we had to request permission in order to go to the pharmacy, to the supermarket. Uh, but now we oh, are allowed. Wow. Yeah, we are allowed to How does that, out. how does that work? Like, how do you, who do you So we had to send a, uh, an, um, a message, a text message, uh, saying that I have to go to the supermarket. My name is that, and this is the address of my house. And then it was an automatic message saying that you're allowed to go to the pharmacy, the supermarket, or anything else. So you weren't allowed to go for a walk or a bike ride or you could like You that. could go for um, exercise, but, you know, mm -hmm. close to your home. Mm -hmm. And obviously, you know, it's, it's quite challenging that. For, especially for Greeks, you know, we have the Mediterranean flair, we want to go out. But I think because of these kind of measures, we were very, very lucky. We didn't have 
a lot of debts comparing to our neighbors. And mm -hmm. I think that, yeah, I think that the government did a very good job up until now, and I hope that this will continue. But, you know, everyone needs to be very, very careful with the personal hygiene, with the social distancing. I mean, because now we are allowed to go out doesn't mean that you don't have to be yeah. very protective for yourself, you know. Yeah. It's, it's, it's very strange times for all of us, Sarah. Nobody knows the next day. But we are hoping no. for the best. Yeah, yeah. And I'm trying to focus a little bit on some of the, like, the good news or the the cool things that I'm hearing that people are doing to be of service and and the unique and creative ways that they're doing that. I mean, you're doing volunteering. Oh, no. So, well, that's see, that's that's completely related to what I'm seeing my friends doing. I mean, thank God for social media in many ways, like this way that we can all stay connected and um, share these stories. Some of my friends in a in a neighborhood really nearby were packing um, like sack lunches for the homeless community. And so I just texted my girlfriend and said, do you know where are those every, like a bunch of families in the neighborhood were collecting them all in one place and doing them in their homes and then dropping them. And one person was taking them to a community center. And I, I asked where they were going to. And so I just emailed um, this place called the center in Hollywood, which is, um, a center uh, for kind of a day day programs for the homeless mm -hmm. community. It's not somewhere for, for people to sleep, but they can come and uh, charge their phones and get their mail and have a meal and then take part in any kind of programs for addiction or anything like that. And so they can't run those programs now. And they also can't have volunteers come and put together the sack lunches and any of that so they they do they did need the sack lunches to be made but it was interesting because when I emailed and asked what they needed um immediately a woman responded and said let's jump on the phone and she said you have two kids I've never said I needed this before but I need notes for my staff of encouragement I need I need them to be I need she said I need you to love on them and um I just thought that was really beautiful and maybe something for other, that other people can do and share in their communities. Just, um, you know, like the good news, you can see, I see videos every night in New York city and some, and some in LA, but we're a little bit more spread out here of seven o'clock, you know, people are beating the pans from their windows for the healthcare workers. So that was really interesting. And she also said to, in the sack lunches, you know, if your kids can just write a note to, the recipient of it that says we're thinking Beautiful. of you yeah i love so, it it's really what interesting from, what people yeah are. what do you expect from the next day what are you hoping for the next day after this yeah A after because we are focusing I, on the positive today okay i'm going to try to focus on the positive because yeah. i can i can, I can yeah. spiral i hope that i hope I hope that we, gosh, Learn I'm at something. a loss. It's just like, I hope that there's meaning here. I hope that we are changed by this in a positive way. I hope, you know, it's so interesting, this idea of social distancing. That is not, our social distancing and the reason we wear, wear a mask isn't just for ourselves. It's to protect the whole community. And if there can just be like an energetic shift where that becomes That's true. much more a part of our lives. This time for me has felt a little bit like 9-11 um, in New York. I know it's, I know they're totally different, but I'm just watching my emotions. Yeah. And I'm feeling something really similar. I have moments where I, I, I remember actually on 9-11, um, I was in my apartment in New York City and my husband was at work in 30 Rock and he, so he had a direct view of the Twin Towers and actually was in a conference room and saw, saw one, the second plane and when he was walking home when he was lucky enough to be somebody who was walking home that day um, you know we were all glued to our TVs and then I just took a moment and I just went to go make the bed and I just like I can't get that image out of my head of like just being able to make the bed, just how lucky I was that I could make my bed. And I think this like simplification, this pause 
there has to be meaning in this for all of us. This is something that affected is affecting everybody in the entire world. We're yeah. all in this. The mo most important thing is to care about your fellow men. I think that this is the lesson that we have to actually learn from that. If there is something yeah. good that we can learn from this kind of situation is to, you know, to care about the person next to you. Yeah. yeah. And have empathy for everybody's journey. Everybody's going through something, you know. Everybody. No, it's, it's quite difficult, but... You know that a lot of people are asking me, when are you going to write again for us? You were a big, big hit, seriously. I can see it in all of these comments. Sarah, when are you going to write? When are you going to write? I can't see the comments. I'm like, I need... Gosh, well, I'm on my phone. That doesn't help. I'm on I know. It's, I'm in my phone as well. It's quite difficult to actually concentrate with both you and the comment section. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you for inviting me to write. I'm so honored. I was really surprised. You're a fantastic writer. Oh, that's so nice. That's no, very no, no, generous. No, you are. I really loved it. Oh, I, well, I can't, I can't wait to tell my mom you said that. <laughs> <laughs> She's an English really, teacher. She was an English teacher for 30 years. I know. So. Tell me. I mean, how was the experience from an actor oh. writing? Yeah. Well, it was so, um, gosh, you know, it was so interesting. I, when I sat down, I wasn't really sure where to begin because we were, I, I didn't really know where it was going to go, which is kind of the process of, um, of acting when you show up for a scene. I mean, you're prepared, you know what you're supposed to say, but you don't know exactly what the director and what the act, other actor are going to bring and what you're going to find. And so it was just an interesting process of, I thought we were writing about, you know, just about Fashion Week in Paris and my first experience in Paris. Um, it's a fantastic we, Fashion Week. We had so much fun. It was amazing. Um, but it turned into being a lot about what travel means to me and family and memory. And um, I think That's what's interesting really about... It was much more than a travel story. It yeah, I think what's interesting you and for me... Family. Yeah, and how they were there. Yeah, you know, and like the mom guilt about going. Like, <laughs> you know, a lot of a lot of women actually connected with that because you know a lot of, especially very successful women that they are traveling a lot and they're feeling all the time the guilt that, oh my God, I left my kids back home and now I'm working so much, so much, mm -hmm. and uh, it's, it drives me crazy. But again, I mean, it's it's your job and you have to do it, but you're never forgetting the children. And I came back and I did promise them that we were going to go back and spend some time in Paris. And you and so will. The, <laughs> so the, and we will. We will. And the good thing is, is that my little one, my eight-year-old, um, we've been doing, do you, have you ever done the Duolingo app? It's like a, it's a language. Yes, of course. Learning app. You don't need That's it. You speak my... all the languages. Um, <laughs> but we've been doing that. that. We, have, we, have, we have to try both of us, the Duolingo app. I'm trying now with my Italian to improve my Italian. Oh my gosh. It's just what's amazing, you have all the pathways set in your brain. You know, you've been, spe how long have you been speaking? I mean, you were, you grew up speaking at least two or three languages just from uh, the get-go, right? To tell you the truth, uh, my mother and my uncle were speaking Italian. So from a very young age, I was very familiar with the language, but I had an obsession of learning French. So I decided to learn French and then I went to an American college. Uh, so <laughs> I had all the English as well. No, it's, so you went, it's to, nothing you went to college in the, U in the US? No, no, no. I went to Thessaloniki, my hometown, but I okay, uh, okay. have an American school there. So okay. it was between going to French school or to an American. And then I decided it's much better for me to go to an American school here. So yes, that's pretty much the story of how I now speak three languages, not something very, very impressive. But Trust me, I know people who speak is. seven languages, seven. Oh my God. You must, it must be so fun to travel to be able to do that though. I mean, oh, and you yeah, can I use so. different languages. I mean, I remember my, I went to Italy with my husband and neither of us spoke a word of Italian, but he speaks French fluently and I can like, you I know, kind of get by. And and then that worked. It was interesting. It was great. It was a great trip. Your, your husband is Finnish, right? Yeah, he's Finnish. So do you speak the language or you understand the language? No. 
No. Your daughters? No, time. it's hard. It's hard. So it's, you know, it's not a romance language. There's not, you, you can't really find your way in. Um, there's not words that you're like, oh, that sounds like, you know, a word in Latin, you know, like that I took Latin. So that sort of helps me, but that's why I don't really speak anything. Um, I've been having interesting conversations to him because <clears throat> Finland stock has been stockpiling since um, World War II. So they were prepared. That's for the true. pandemic, which is really interesting. They, fin, Finns are, are proud, proud people. So we, we recognize them in this house and, you know, they're good planning and their great educational system. And great. That's all your that we've been talking about. When will we travel again though? I mean. Oh, Sarah, that's... I hope very, very soon. I really, I really miss traveling. But you know, yeah. now, it, I mean, Thessaloniki, I imagine that's when our office are open again. I have to travel to Athens. And to tell you the truth, it gives me a nightmare to think that I'm going on an airplane to travel back to Athens. It's, it's like only half hour. It's nothing. But, you know, it's, it's the fear. I have to do Do you have it. a sense of when that's going to be? Probably in a month from now on. I mean, now we're working remotely for the last two issues, uh, uh -huh. which is very interesting i i couldn't imagine tell myself working remotely to, to do a magazine yes tell me about that how how are you doing that and how are you producing the images all the stories and... so we were very lucky that um, you know vogue normally i mean they're we are preparing our stories three issues ahead uh so we we're very lucky that we had a lot of productions done before the quarantine uh, but again, we had also to syndicate some stories for the first time. Uh, and for me, it was challenging because I, I really wanted to have original productions. And up until now, we only had original productions. But in these times that we are living, we couldn't do a production. And, uh, so we syndicated a lot of stories. But the good thing is that when you have um, such a fantastic team as Vogue Reese is, uh, we have set so many creative people. I mean, like my production manager, Joanna, had this idea of asking photographers who live with models to shoot during quarantine in their houses. So we prepared, yeah, we prepared a fashion mm -hmm. story, which was not exactly a fashion story. There were not credits or everything, but it was so emotional. And the moment we saw us, our managing editor said, George said, okay, I, I know the title. Love will keep us safe. So we prepared all of the issue behind this kind of concept. It's, it's very strange. I mean, if you asked me like three months ago, my main issue, it would be the body issue. I had done the production. I, I was imagining how we empower women to love their bodies. And then this happened and we had to change everything immediately. And I'm very lucky that I have such a creative team of thinking so fast and so quick. And to tell you the truth, this issue was almost sold out. Amazing. People, yeah, yeah. I think so. And that, you, you can actually, you're producing it. I mean, like how, <laughs> it's getting printed and it's getting yeah, distributed. It's, it's, I mean, we are doing all the work from home. Uh, we are preparing the stories. All the editors, they are sending their stories to our copy editor. Uh, she sends them to our art director. He's preparing all the pages. He sends it to me. Uh, to approve them and then we are doing a meeting all of us uh before we send it to print but no it's uh, for the distribution we didn't have any kind of problem but it was very interesting for us to work so remotely i mean uh, and after I, only one year i mean yes so you're one after, year in and you have to pivot like this i mean if you think about we we're planning our april issue would be the anniversary issue uh for like three months and we're saying, okay, it will be a celebratory uh, issue and we'll do a fantastic big party and uh, we're thinking of the campaign and everything, we could find the perfect place. And then the virus came, so we had to change everything. We had to have a celebratory issue, but at the same time, to recognize the, what was happening around us. So this was quite interesting for us and quite challenging but okay april was difficult but now that we did may and june we said okay we, we can do it remotely wow i hope that we will start the productions next month if everything goes according to plan and mm -hmm. if it's obviously safe for all of us to be in a production 
Right. How about And how that? did you how did you find yourself so so you're the youngest editor in chief of Vogue, of a Vogue. This, correct? Yes, now yes, I am I think yes. So what how did what was your journey to to this position? Like how did you come how I started did you study journalism? Like were you what's the No, I was a huge junkie of magazines. I was reading seriously so much so many magazines. But uh, no, I studied um, law. I, uh -huh. I am an intellectual property lawyer. Uh, <laughs> actually, my master's degree was about product placement in the TV series, uh, oh film industry. Yeah, I was working for the Greek Film Festival, so I thought that I could combine law and cinema. Uh, and then my PhD is in uh, the film industry and copyright law. But I found, you know, I thought that okay. Being a lawyer, it was not something that I would imagine myself. Obviously, I really loved it, but ah, it was not 100% me. But I had some great connection. I met a lot of journalists when I was in London studying. And um, a friend of mine approached me when they were deciding to bring Vogue back to Greece. Because we had Vogue, a previous... edition but it stopped in uh, 2012 I think uh, and they told me hang on can you I think that I'm frozen I think you're frozen it'll come back right I hope so tech support where's my tech support where is Elena okay <laughs> where is Elena to support me and it's not a very flattering image. <laughs> That's too bad. Sarah, uh, probably I'll have to end the session and uh, we can start it from the beginning if it's okay with you. Sure. Okay, okay. I'll do it now yep. and let's do it in a minute. Okay. I'm so sorry. Oh, sorry for that. No, no, no. Uh, even even Instagram was so bored with my journey. <laughs> no, no, I'm <laughs> going from a lawyer to being a journalist. <laughs> this is amazing. So okay, so so keep keep telling me the path. So a friend of mine was telling me that they want to bring Vogue back to Greece, uh, and uh, if I could uh, help them uh, with the negotiation, so I started speaking with Condé Nast, the mother company. Uh, and um, in the middle of the discussion, uh, the executive director of editorial development, a woman that I admire the most, she's, um, she's a Russian, she's very tough, she's Karina Dobrodvotskaya. She told me, um, are you sure you don't want to become the editor-in-chief of this magazine? And I told her, are you totally insane? Okay, obviously I love the magazine, I know the title, but seriously, me? Why? I don't have any journalistic experience. I love fashion, but from loving fashion to actually being an editor-in-chief of a fashion Bible. But, you know, it's this, she saw something, I think. And, uh, you know, I think that this kind of project is not based on one person. It's based on a beautiful team. And I have the most creative team a person could ask for. I mean, I have a great publisher. She's a woman that says... This is so inspiring. We have a fantastic art director, our fashion director. He's amazing as well. All of the team. So it's not about the person. It's about the team, I think. Yeah, that's amazing. And we have you as the contributing <laughs> editor. Um, well, I, you know, to answer your question, I think the next thing that was in the plan was to, at some point, get to, get to Greece. We talked about it the first time that we met. You um, promised me that you were coming yeah. to Greece. I thought it would be this summer. We'll see. <laughs> we'll see. According to Telegraph, we are the safe destination. So, why not? Okay. Okay. <laughs> um, yes. No, I would be really curious about what the itinerary should be. Okay. What I'm would you to... say? Like, I mean, we'd have to go see Athens. Obviously, okay. you'll come see Athens, and then we are going to do island hopping. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm going to take you to Milos, which is one of my favorite islands. Um, and then we can go to um, 
to Sandorini to see the most beautiful sunset. Okay. And we can go to one of very, 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 very small island, but it's very dear to my heart. It's called Simi. It's okay. next to Turkey and to Rhodes Island. So you will love it. It's the most colorful island you've ever seen. All of them, they are very far, each one, but we will do island hopping. And you do that by plane? You island hop by plane, can, right? Yes, you can do the island hop by plane or... Uh, in, oh, oh, no, to go to Simi, you have to go, obviously, by boat. Boat? But trust me, it's the most beautiful island. And why <laughs> does Santorini have the best sunset? What is it? Seriously, I was last year with um, Alessandra Ambrosio we were shooting the September issue. And I mean, this kind of light, it's so warm. It's, you feel the energy of the island. Seriously, I cannot, I cannot tell you why, but this kind of light, it's, it's only there. Mm -hmm. And obviously you can see the sunset from a very high point. So you see the ocean and the sunset, it's the most magical place. I couldn't believe that, you know, it's, it's only from this island, but apparently it is. Wow. And do you feel like the energy, if you're in the ruins or some, you know, somewhere with all this history that you know has had my man gosh. dwelling there for so long, making art, do, do you, can you feel it? Like, I mean, like in a woo-woo way? A few months ago, Mary Catranzo did a fantastic song in the Temple of Poseidon. And literally, we had goosebumps, all of us, because we're seeing all the marbles and we're thinking of the history behind that. And we were listening to the music of Vangelis and watching this beautiful show with Mary's dresses and all the ruins behind. I mean, it was one of lifetime experience. Like I can't, I can't even describe. Mm -hmm. if, every time I see the Parthenon, I mean, I have goosebumps. I mean, all the history behind that. And... We don't appreciate as much as we should, but you know, when you live in a country, you don't appreciate the small things that you pass by. Yeah, I, it's it's funny because I lived in New York for a long time and grew up just thirty miles outside of New York, and it's like I haven't ever been up the Empire State Building or to the Statue of Liberty. I mean, I've been to a bunch of the museums, but I think I don't think I've ever been to the Frick. Like I can, you know, I. It, they were right there all the time. I didn't take advantage of it. And then it was interesting when we moved to Toronto because for suits, <clears throat> we were only there for part of the, for eight months out of the year. And then I didn't, you sort of didn't know if the next year was in the cards. You didn't really know. And so we lived there and we had a home there, but I lived there as a tourist. I made sure that we always saw yeah. everything that was at the AGO or, you know, the the Art Gallery of Ontario, which is now one of my favorite museums. But like we did we we really got to know that city because I had a sense that this was we weren't gonna live there forever. But I thought how I was gonna live there forever. How was your life how was your life in Toronto? Oh it was oh, it was awesome. It was so great. Um Toronto's a really beautiful city. <clears throat> um it's it's got everything you want in terms of restaurants and Farm to table restaurants and um, art, music, the great music comes in. The teams, the Toronto Raptors won the NBA championship the last year that we were there. And that was very exciting for us. And people, and it's, it's, it's a big cosmopolitan city that has a, um, uh, to me, it felt like it had more of a small, small town feel. Like we all loved the Raptors or loved the Blue Jays. Um, it's a really beautiful city. I also felt like there was a lot of um, like eco consciousness. There's bike lanes and you go to a farmer's market and everybody's bringing their own reusable water bottle. You know, it just seems like very, there's compost everywhere. You know, it's very, a proper city it to felt awful. Yeah, it was, and, and it's beautiful. And we love to ride our bikes around and I felt safe on the, in our neighborhood with the kids on the bikes. It was, um, it was really idyllic. And then I worked this? on the, yeah. Do you miss this life? I mean, suits were like part of your life for 10 years and living in Toronto for 10 years. I mean, do you miss being Donna and do you miss being there? I do. I mean, if, <laughs> so this is the time, April was always the month that we went back to Toronto. And we all knew in my family, we're like, April's going to be when it starts to feel weird that we are not packing up and moving. Um, I definitely miss 
having other people dress me up. That was really fun. <laughs> just like the hair and, and the makeup. They did a fantastic and... job. I mean, that was... fashion-wise, you were the most fashionable character. It was insane. And so it was just so, so I do, I miss that. But what I truly miss, I mean, I thought I turned off notifications, which I did, but they're going to keep coming. Um, so what was I going to say? I really miss the community that we had, the family that we had, um, you know, just like the really simple moments of grabbing a coffee in the makeup trailer with Christian, who did Gabriel's hair, you know, like, who, you know, what it, this, the, that life. And then the kids coming when I worked late on a Friday, they would come to set and they could just run around and bring the dog and they'd visit wardrobe and they'd try things on or they'd go to craft service. Just the, the family of it. We were all really close and I miss my friends. Um, I miss my colleagues. I really, I miss our crew. We had the best crew. Um, and it was just so, it, we were all just so comfortable. So I do miss it. I miss, and I also miss like walking in Donna's shoes. Like that, that's a really fun person to like put on and kind of see through her eyes and that kind of confidence. And it's really inspiring. I mean, for a lot of women from, I mean, from a great secretary to become a chief operating officer. I mean, it really sends a very powerful message of women empowerment. Yeah. And that she advocated for herself. Um, I also really appreciated how she had so much emotional intelligence. Like that was her superpower. That was really fun to play. Um, you know, sometimes I was like, oh, it'd be fun if she was a lawyer and could have cases, but it was really Is more it, fun for her to be all up in everybody's emotional business and baggage <laughs> in some ways. He's Donna, she knows everything. Right. <laughs> right. Right. That was but her motto. That was, after all, yeah, yeah. it was, that was really Donna just a great blessing. Pictures. What? What did you say? I really miss Donna. I really, really miss this show. Seriously. Oh. I mean, hole in my heart. What are your oh. plans, your next plans after quarantine? Anything that you're preparing? Gosh, um, like this is one of my, my like rabbit holes is I don't know wh what's going to happen with our industry, like when it will come back and and how it will come back um, that's the thing how it will come back the logistics of it you know how or we're going to be on set or the hollywood movies or the series i mean it's complicated. and the travel i mean yeah, even no. i even saw that john tory the mayor of toronto was talking just yesterday there was a headline about how he's talking about like how how is it going to happen that we're going to open the borders and get people back onto the sets and because you know there's a lot of production in Canada, there's a lot of production in LA. Um, I hope that they will find a vaccine or a medicine very, very soon in order for all of us to go into our normal life. Yeah, because the, the, you think about how many people are employed on a set, you know, there's, there's the hair and makeup and then there's a the wardrobe and there's all the, you know, the grips and the camera operators and there's a lot of people. It's a lot. And I don't know. I mean, yesterday they announced that we're not going to have any festival or any theatrical performance during uh, summer, which, you know, Greece is very famous about their festivals. Yeah. And, um, the summer. And you think about the theater too, like... Exactly. The theater. You're talking about getting on a plane and just like walking into a theater. My one of my favorite things to do is to go to New York and go to as many plays as I can. And just to think that that's not happening right now. I mean, that's like part of the heartbeat of the city, you know. And how much you're afraid of going into a theater, into a cinema, I mean, to, to a close space. I mean, I don't know when we are going to to overcome this fear and. Yeah. It's amazing to see different what different communities are doing. I mean, I, I, this time has been so amazing because I've never felt in in a lot of ways I've never felt more connected to my friends. I've never been on more like texting groups or had more Zoom sessions. Um, I'm closer to my family now because we're doing these Sunday. All of us, I have, I have three sisters. We get on with my parents. You know, we're all talking. Last Sunday it was we were on for three hours, all of us. Wow. I mean, that, th those are the gifts, like the silver linings of it, the funny things that 
the sixth grade moms are sending on the texting chain, you know, that, that kind of thing. But I also get to see what, what people are doing. Like I talked about my friends, Christine and Heather, who had, were making the sack lunches or I have my friend Tommy in the theater community in New York. I just saw on, on um, social media that a bunch of theater professionals are coming together to create a theater experience. You can buy a ticket to it. And that money goes to no kid hungry. Oh, um, cool. And even like my friend, I don't know if, if, if you might've seen that I posted a few things of my friend, um, Rachel, who is a yeah, emergency room doctor. And um, <clears throat> Great she, woman. yeah, she's amazing. She's always been one. Of, she's always been one of my heroes. So it's no different now. So she, um, she was working in the ER during this and a friend of hers, um, contacted her and said like, what, what can we do? And what can we do to help? And she had remarked that somebody had um, brought in juices, fresh juices for, for all the team in the ER. And that it was a huge morale builder because none of the doctors and the nurses and staff, they don't have time to step away to feed themselves. And so, um, so that friend and a couple of other friends and uh, Rachel's husband, Chris, were emailing with each other and then they just emailed to their friend group and said, Venmo this woman, we're going to get a couple of um, meals together to be delivered to the ER, to the staffs at hospitals. And before you knew it, that Venmo situation turned into a proper, I mean, within a week, they had a proper non not-for-profit happening. And they not only were building up, you know, saying thank you to the frontline workers, but also servicing the small businesses and, tr and keeping the smaller restaurants afloat in our community. And now I actually was on the phone with Chris yesterday talking about a lot of things, but I wrote this down because I wanted to tell my husband and I really want to tell you. Um, so in the first three or four weeks, they served 4,000 meals. And now it's, a, and they have a proper name and website. It's called Dine One One. D I N E one one dot org. And now they're popping up. There's one in New York City, in Washington, DC, in Long Island, in San Francisco, and in LA. And they think that they're saving um, two hundred jobs a week in the restaurant industry. Wow. So I don't know. There it's just amazing what can happen so quickly, you know, that they put this they put this together and you know it's one of those good news stories that I definitely wanted to share because it's amazing. I mean, it's, 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 it's such a great initiative. Yeah. And, and yeah. who knows when this is over, when, you know, when we're not worried about this disease anymore, what that will be turn into, you know, though it could turn into. Nobody knows. Thing. I think that this kind of the uncertainty is that what scares us. We don't know what the next day will be. We don't know it will be the next day and if this yeah, will end soon or not i mean okay we are going out of the quarantine but this doesn't mean that the virus is over or is not there yeah you know what is happening to italy to spain to us i mean the situation is very difficult but i think that we need to support all of us as much as we can the frontline workers that they are working so hard for all of us. Mm -hmm. I mean, now it's the first time that we actually notice the amazing work that all of these people here are doing. Yeah. Not only the doctors and the nurses who are doing an unbelievable job, but also the people who work in the supermarkets and the delivery industry. Now we, are, we appreciate much more their amazing work. Yeah. Which I think it's the second good thing that happened from this kind of situation. The first is that we now understand that we don't have to care only about ourselves, but for the person of us. Yeah. Yeah, that's so, the key. I hope so. I hope we'll be transformed in I think that so. positive and I way. Really, I really want to, to think positively about this situation, that the next day will come soon, and we will be happy and healthy, all of us, mm -hmm. which is the most. Yeah. And we will travel again soon, and we are going to Paris again together, what do you think will happen? Do you think there'll be fewer collections? Yeah. Shows? Yesterday they announced that they are not 
going to do any shows for 2020. So, which no. is huge. Uh, I think that uh, London Fashion Week is going to be held online only. And I think that since Celeron announced that yesterday, pretty much all the big brands will make these kind of announcements very soon. Wow. God. I think that my internet again is a bit tricky. Can you see you me? It, I can see you. Do you think it'll come back? I hope so. Oh, now I can read the... You can read this. The I can read the, some of the comments. I should put what on my, my glasses. Hello. No, nothing is happening. Let me turn it on again. No. Tara, let's do it one more time to say also one last question for you. Sure. Uh, Hi, Sophia. Hi, Tim. I'm so sorry for all these technical difficulties. Probably it's my internet that's a bit tricky. It's the hour. Uh, I'm, I'm back. I hope that Sarah is here with me as well. Yes, she's here for our final five minutes. So sorry to all of you. Hi. I'm so sorry, Sarah. I don't know what is happening. Don't worry. Don't worry. Oh my gosh. So we have so many technical difficulties. I told you that we were like zooming with my family. The funniest part is watching my mom try to like figure out the zoom. He's, he's always like this. <laughs> what are you saying? That's actually me before I stole the AirPods from. Wait, am I back? Yes, you're back. Okay. With, with your earphones. I think that they are a lifesaver. I know. Are yeah. you binging any TV shows? Yeah, to tell you that just now, I'm in the mood that I really want to see like the comfort sitcoms. The, all oh, of yeah. them that I've already seen them millions of times. So from How I Met Your Mother, again, Friends, again, Community. I mean, all of them, Big Bang Theory. But uh, I saw Unorthodox in Netflix was was great. So good. Okay. It was so good. We have also um, an Insta Live with the author of the book on Monday. I think it will be a great one. Uh, I mean, it's 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 such a powerful mini series. You have to see it. Um, if if you don't have seen it, it's amazing and it's um, it's so powerful and it's a very dynamic female character and she says a very interesting and. Uh, unknown story for the majority of all of us. Uh, so, and it, it's in Berlin, it's a beautiful city, very alternative. And uh, I think that you will really, really enjoy it. It's not an easy series. I mean, it's not something very funny or uplifting, mm -hmm. but uh, I think it's, it's very interesting. But to tell you the truth, no, I prefer to, to watch series that makes me laugh a lot. Yeah. I need that in my life. Have you watched Shit's Creek yet? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. It's a good one for laughing. I love it. I like what that one for laughing. Now? Um, so I, I alone binged Ozark, which is amazing. Mm -hmm. I've always loved Laura Linney and Jason Bateman, and they're amazing. So the third season of that. And then um, some of the things that I watched with my kids, we watched – so it's a little tricky with my kids because I have a 12-year-old and I have an 8-year-old, so what they can watch is very different. But um, – out of, you know, desperation, I just have been watching some things where I take my eight-year-old kind of out for a moment. Um, so we watched Cheer. Did you watch that docuseries? No. Cheer on Netflix? Good. Oh, it's so great. It's about okay. um, it's about cheerleaders. You're going to want to watch it. It's amazing. It is it is uplifting. It's, it's amazing. Okay. Um, and okay. my whole family loved that. And then we watched, um, there's a four-part Hillary Clinton documentary, which was really valuable 
there were a couple of places, of course, where I had to take the eight year old out, but really valuable to see, um, to look at her life in kind of, they, they do a great job of taking in the entire feminist movement and bringing in a lot of history. So that was very valuable. Um, I love her a, book, The What Happened, it was a great book. Yeah, and she's just, she's being pretty frank. Um, like so there's a moment where she's like, I can't stand Bernie Sanders. <laughs> And it was just I mean, like a really interesting yes, has human thing to say. And she's putting it out there. Yeah. Um, so that was interesting to watch. What else did we watch? We watched the Bill Gates documentary. My little one. They, actually, both girls are really loving like anything on Nat Geo, the Nat Geo oh, channel. So I like, love them. like um, very Egypt. Crazy. Like the eat like the lost treasures of Egypt, you know, like <laughs> those kinds of things. And then we started watching Morgan Freeman's show on Nat Geo, which is called The Story of God. The Story of God, okay. Where he travels the world and talks to people about their faith. Like he'll he'll be in Lourdes and talk to a woman who feels that she was received a miracle when she was in Lourdes or um you know, travel to outside of Toronto to meet a Native American man who goes on a vision quest. And so the travel element plus the like spiritual, I mean, and the footage is incredible. Like, um, you know, he'll be in India on the Ganges River and just like on a boat talking about faith. You you know, it it's, it's great. And my kids are into it. Sold. So yeah. definitely in my list right now. It's a good one. So that's all I got, I think. I think it's, it's, it's interesting trying to find, I mean, and then there's like, you know, Trolls the movie and stuff like that that's <laughs> happening, but. Uh, we have plenty now of material that you suggested for all of us <laughs> to do during yeah. quarantine. No, we love that. So I want you to, hear, to send a message to all of our followers now. You want me to send a message? Yes, something positive, something happy as you are. I'm just, I just want to send them all love. And um, I hope that everybody can feel this sense that we're all in this together. Um, and that we will come out of this and there will be meaning. We will have growth. Um, and I hope we'll continue to feel deeply connected to each that's, other. That's the most beautiful thing that I have heard. Yeah. That's true. My God, it, it was so okay, great to see you. So nice to see you. So I'm great. sending you so much love. I'm sorry for all that you've been through. Thank you, my oh, thank you, my love. It's so, so kind of you. Please give all of your family all of my love. Thank you. Thank and you. I'll hope, see you soon. Yeah, and hope the next time that I'm going to see you will be in Greece. Yes. <laughs> we, will, we will do island hopping and you will be writing the next story for Vogue Greece. Amazing. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you so much for being here. Lots my of love. Thank you. Mwah. Big kiss. Thank you, my love. Okay. Bye. Bye. So, thank you all for being here with us. Seriously, uh, I know we had plenty of technical problems, but thank you all for staying here. We had such love and positive energy from all of you. I hope to see you all on Monday for our next Insta Live event, our amazing Fashion Features Director, Ellis Keys, will be interviewing Deborah Feldman, the author of uh, Unorthodox. So tune in, stay safe, and thank you all for being here with us today. Have a lovely night. Bye.